Good morning. My name is Mike Graham. I'm one of the public information officers with the city of Tucson Department of Transportation and Mobility. I want to thank you for attending uh, this public art meeting. Uh, before we, we begin, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, if you're calling in, we ask that you mute yourself and remain muted. Instructions on how to turn on the subtitles in the chat. If you would like to ask a question or uh, provide any comments, you will see the question and answer icon in the top right corner of your screen. Uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Also, when you open that box, you will see a sign in sheet and please sign in and we can make sure to update you on any future meetings and uh, information uh, on the project as we get going. So now I'd like to turn the, the, uh, the meeting over to our director, Diana Alarcon, with the uh, Department of Transportation Mobility. Thank you. So uh, good morning and thank you for joining us today. Um, I, as Mike had said, I am uh, Diana Alarcon. I'm the director of transportation mobility here with the city of Tucson. Uh, the pur purpose of this meeting is to share the art concepts that will be part of our Halton Road Improvement Project from 22nd Street to Irvington Road with the community and provide a platform for you to provide us with some inputs on the concepts. We do ask that everybody in attendance be respectful with your questions and your comments. Um, a final decision on the, on the art has not yet been made um, and we are listening to all um, comments. Excuse me, I'm a bit tongue tied this morning. Uh, I'd like to at this time now introduce uh, our, our um, partners in this um, process from the Art Foundation, um, and that is the Executive Director, um, Adriana Gallo, and I, I may be saying it wrong, and I'm sorry about that, Adriana, and then Woods Fairchild. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Adriana, and um, thank you very much for being our partners in this process. Thank you so much, Diana. Good morning, everyone. I'm Adriana Gallego, Executive Director for the Arts Foundation for Tucson and Southern Arizona. We are very excited to hear your thoughts and comments on the design concepts that will be presented this morning. Um, Woods Fairchild Public Art Project Manager will be introducing um, the artists that will be uh, designing this project. Thank you. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, Woods Fairchild Public Art Projects Manager with the Arts Foundation for Tucson in Southern Arizona. Um, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, the artist Car um, Carolyn Brax Braxma, uh, who will be presenting her artwork to the community uh, and sharing with you this morning um, with her updated uh, uh, concept designs to share with you. With no uh, further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Carolyn. Hi everybody, I'm glad you could make it this far. I'm sorry that we can't do this in person, but there's a lot that prohibits that right now. So therefore we do have a PowerPoint. I'm Carolyn Broxma and I'm working on the Houghton Road project in Tucson from 22nd to Irvington. I actually live outside of Denver, but I work across the country. And one thing that's really important to note is that this art that I've designed is particular to the Tucson and Arizona region. Um, what I would do for you all is not the same kind of thing I do in Denver or Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is somewhat specific and it's sort of what some of the people before me have made up as the rules for public art. So I have a couple pictures. Um, next picture, first picture. I have a couple pictures. This is a, a project I worked on um, in North Tucson and it's on La Cañada Boulevard. And it was some wall work. All this is about the agave and it's hand carved, agave and saguaro, both plants of your region. And that's a crested saguaro on top that's carved. There's also um, off the shelf block and glass block. And the glass block lets the ambient light through. We didn't like the project because the people were very uh, particular about keeping their night skies dark, but this lets just the regular sunrise through. And the agave that's on its side, we hand carved that. Somebody else and I hand carved those pieces and then they were cast um, into form liner and cast in into concrete by the contractor. 
Next. Again, off the shelf materials for the paving, but they're cut into a particular pattern. And on the right, you see the railing. I chose the color for the railing. I chose the curve for the horizontal members. And then we put some pieces on that are reminiscent of seed pods of some of the local indigenous plants. And there are a number of these up and down the corridor that you could go see um, if you were out in the direction of La Cañada. Okay, next. Here's some of the inspiration for this next project for Houghton Road. And again, I'm looking at plants. The the first time I came to Arizona as an adult, I was working in um, Scottsdale with a landscape architect named Jeff Engelman, and he attuned me to the smell of the creosote. And because he was a plant guy, we talked a lot about the plants. And I think it really starts to tell you about your region if we look at the plants, if we look at the animals. And so these are some of my inspirations. And uh, the next picture, I think, shows you more in detail on that. Next, Saguaro, of course. The, the Saguaro cactus is such a nice architectural model. You know, there's something about it that's, even though it's organic, there's something really regular about it. And I think this gets emulated in concrete a lot. But I'm also interested in some of the patterns that are made. Um, down below, you see that fan shape, and that makes you think of the crested Saguaro again. Next. Again, some more agaves. And I really keyed into those red points on the left one. They call them teeth or spines. And on the right one, what really intrigues me about the Saguaro from the first time I ever saw them is the way that they imprint on the leaf below them and that the teeth start to show up. Next. I also really love the color. Um, here's the Coleandra. It's also called powder puff sometimes. And this is a native in, in your area. It's much smaller than what I'm making it. It's like a low shrub, but you know, to imagine having this kind of natural plant is really crazy for me because they don't grow out in the wild where I am. And when you look at the barrel cactus, you see those stars. And I'm using that star shape on some of the sculptures. And they also travel, you can see it more on the right-hand side. They travel in a diagonal pattern. And so we're looking at some of that. Next. I work a lot on walls, uh, highway walls and neighborhood walls. But this time for this project, my design team or the neighborhood people of the design team requested sculptures. So I've designed sculptures this time. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, we see three pictures here. But it's two sculptures with one enlargement. And We'll show you what they're made out of in another um, picture. But again, it's the saguaro and then it's the star patterns that are found and the fan up at the top. Next. And these are the metal sculptures. These are the ones that will go down on the ground um, at the intersection. And these are agave leaves. And you also see that star pattern. And then it becomes a star, as we know, like out of coloring book days. Next. Here, here are the sculptures in context. And these will be at um, Escalante. This one's for the southeast corner. Let's see, I have something in my screen that's in the way. I can't read it. The southeast corner of Houghton and Escalante. And this is approximately what it'll look like. I think there will probably be more plants around it. And then there will be um, rocks that the landscape architect and I talked about putting in rocks that could be treated as seating or that mitigate the verticality of the sculpture to the ground. Next. This is the other metal sculpture. And there's your coleandra up on top which is an indigenous plant to Arizona. Next. This is the location of the sculptures. You see those red dots. And it's at Escalante and Houghton Road. 
And there will be some walkway there. And this will be more of a, a wander by kind of opportunity where you, you'll be able to get up close to the sculptures. And apparently there will be a path and, and there will be the opportunity for people to walk by. Next. Here's, here's the breakdown of what the pieces are made out of in the approximate size. You see the guy for a sense of scale. The uh, agave leaves, as you see on the left, are made out of metal that's painted. The coleandra up at top is probably also metal. Um, this, these sculptures are all metal, these two sculptures, and then they sit on a concrete base that again has more of that star pattern. Next. And these are the ones that will go at the bridge. And that's the reason for putting concrete down at the bottom. Plus, I really think it would be lovely to car carve uh, some of that agave pattern into clay that gets turned into concrete. And all of these will be lighted. And we have pictures of that, too. And again, you see the size, approximate size, with a guy standing there. And that's pierced metal up at the top, and light will emanate from within. And you can see on the right, it, it's reminiscent of a barrel cactus, and that'll be a metal structure. Next. This is how the metal sculptures will look at night when they're lit up. The one on the left and right are different from each other because of their top decorations. And then the one on the left is also enlarged and in the middle. And you see some of those star patterns. And they'll be like luminaria, sort of, the way they light up, the way the material is pierced in and the light can come from within. Next. And these are the concrete ones. And I think we're talking about lighting up those little spires. And again, you can see how the light comes from within and that the metal is pierced. And so these ones are the concrete with metal on top. Next. Here's the, the uh, bridge ones in context. So you can kind of see how they'll be, what kind of area they'll be in, what kind of material will be around them. Next one. This is the other one. And these are on the bridge approaches. So as you drive up on the bridge on either side, you'll see these off to your right, I believe. Next. Um, here's the approximate bridge outline and where the um, sculptures would be placed. Next. There's a wall. We, th there are a few walls on this project, but there's only one that's really worthy of treating because some of them face the wrong direction or they're hidden or they're too small. But there was one, one wall worth doing something to, and this is its location near McGraw's. It's on the west side of Houghton, and it faces east. Next. This is what the wall would look like. It's an agave pattern that repeats and repeats, and then there will be planting in front of it also. The landscape architect has already spec'd out what plants go there, and there, these are the approximate colors and the approximate sizes over time. Next. More of the same, only different, different plants, I think. And I'm hoping to get the, that little tooth mark in the agave. That's the end of my pictures. And I'm on mute. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, and I now want to uh, pass it over to Teresa Olson with Ward 4 uh, to facilitate any questions that we might have from the community. Thanks so much, Woods. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Carolyn. I, um, you know, from the Ward 4 Council Office, we really appreciate all the time and dedication you and the entire team have done taking in the comments from the community and really taking it to heart and 
uh, be being willing to change your art that you you really put your heart and soul into and we can tell and I, I know some of the comments that we're getting on the the QAs and in the chat people are loving it we're getting a lot of really beautiful comments and we just want to say thank you from the ward for council office and we appreciate this this time to be able to offer up additional questions to the community. So without further ado, I'll start with the first question. And um, if anybody out there has additional questions, please feel free to type them in the QA bar and, and we will begin. So the question is, starts out with a great comment. I like the art at the Southeast corner of Escalante. Do you worry about vandalism to the frail looking crown on the art? Great question. I'm not sure who that would go to, um, but, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Do you want me to answer something? Sure, or, sure. Uh, did you want to talk about art, you know, that you've done and, and vandal if there's a concern with vandalism? It varies project to project, and I have not had a lot of problem with vandalism. Um, I think I have a bigger issue with when a, an area is redeveloped and they take they deaccession the art i've had a lot of that this year but um i have somebody i work with who's my fabricator and he knows what what a project can bear you know anything can be beaten with a hammer what you hope the reason you're talking to neighborhood people now is that they get a sense of ownership in this um art so that they become the protectors of it. They become the owners of it. This isn't my work. I'm just a person who moves through and su makes suggestions about what we can do. Um, the art belongs to the community. And, and in talking about walls that I did more than 20 years ago in um, Scottsdale, they have not been van vandalized. It's shocking to all of us because it would be really easy to spray paint them, but they haven't been vandalized. And I'm assuming we're probably going to use some type of a coating. So if there's graffiti, it's easy to. Right. To, right. Yep. And the guy I work with uses paint, and not powder coating. And so, yeah, then things can be patched up later. But also, I forgot to say about the guy that I work with for a fabricator. He used to be in charge of death members public art program for maintenance and so he looks at it not just from a decorative standpoint but what will hold up and how will it hold up and um, as I write up what this is all about I have to give maintenance instructions and say this if this happens you do this if that happens you do this Fantastic. We're getting some more comments about how beautiful the artwork is. Um, question for you, and I don't know if it would be for, for you, Carolyn, or maybe Michael Marietti or someone on the TDOT team. Uh, the Caliandra is, is gorgeous. And do we know if we're going to have any of that planted around in the, in the area on the street? Maybe we can incorporate some of that? that it is for me because I have talked to the landscape architect and she said we can call out what plants we want to put nearby. And so there is an option for that unless she says to me, oh, it wouldn't do well in this situation. So, you know, that has to be fine tuned still. But the idea is to put if we're talking about agaves, let's put more agaves with it or coleandras with it. You know, we can. Absolutely, I think that would be beautiful. All right, we don't have any more questions coming in, so why don't we give it a couple couple minutes here. Um, Carolyn, again, thank you so much uh, for everything. We, we really appreciate it. Um, we have a great team here behind the scenes with, with TDOT and the Arts Foundation. If anybody had anything that they want to contribute, um, this would be the time. Feel free while we're waiting for any more questions to come in. I'll say something. Um, Carolyn, that was uh, really impressive. Uh, it reminds me of some words that one of our friends said to us before we decided to move to uh, Arizona. She said, the desert has a beauty all its own. 
True. <laughs> and you have to be there to know about, about it. Well, you, you don't get it from the outside. You know, and at the beginning of the project, my husband and I came down when I found out that I was awarded the project. Then we came down to look around and see what, what should this project be about. And every time those plants draw me in. You know, I, I the animals are cool too. The birds, I like the birds. But other people have already done so much with the animals and I think they're really good and why should I try to compete with that? Um, there's just something about the plants. I'm, I do extensive gardening. We have big vegetable gardens here in Colorado at our house and at my studio. And so the plants always resonate with me. I could speak for the Ward 4 community as well. They resonate for us too. So we really, really appreciate the thoughtful approach that you took with this. So we aren't having any more questions coming in this morning. And so we have another one coming up tonight uh, at 530. So if anybody wanted to participate in that conversation or if you had questions that you thought of, um, you know, after, please feel free to join us. At this point, I'm going to hand it over to Diana, uh, our director at Transportation Department. And again, thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Teresa, and thank you to everyone who participated in this, as well as to the folks that are here uh, providing information. Really do appreciate it. And again, thank you, Teresa. Yes, we will have another uh, a public meeting tonight at 530, so we welcome you to join. But I also want to let you know that this was recorded and it will be placed on the project website at haltonroad.information. Um, for anybody who's interested in just going back and rewatching it, um, or uh, you have a friend who wasn't able to attend and you'd like to give them a way to actually get connected. So, and uh, again, you can find all that information about this project is not only about today's public meeting or even tonight's public meeting, which also will be recorded at haltonroad.information. So thank you. We appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy morning and I look forward to seeing some of you folks later on this evening. Have a great day and please stay safe.